one man and his machete. There was a time when a decent burglar, if there is such a thing, would wait until the family was out or at least try to burgle the house quietly without disturbing anybody. Not anymore. Machete man will break into a house, usually with a friend, he will demand money, cards and pin numbers and he will start hacking off body parts if he doesn't get them. Of course, this couldn't possibly happen in Darigto. Except that apparently it had. A couple in Dartmoor close, Darigto were robbed by two thieves wielding machetes who broke into their house and demanded money with menaces on Monday night between the hours of 10 and 11. The police are appealing for witnesses, more radio announced. Micah and I were sitting in the black cat having breakfast. It would have been dark and the street lights are coming on later and later as part of an economy drive, Micah observed. I live here because it is a nice place where this sort of thing does not happen. Be quiet, Craig. I hadn't thought of saying anything at this point. It's not our case obfs, but we can't let this go. She had picked up the use of obfs for obviously from a niece and I was quietly waiting for her to drop it again. So what can we do? Well we could at least ask around. For me asking around usually meant a phone call to see Coda. To Micah it usually meant illegally accessing police information. Still, each to their own. That evening as we were tucking into spaghetti bolognese, my spag bol is of surpassing excellence if I say so myself, we compared notes. The man's name is Lech Box. That is to say the victim's name. I don't know Machete Man's name. Not yet. Micah began. He was bullied at school by people who wanted to see if he could box. Children can be very cruel, I added. Micah nodded. His partner is called Taylor Match. Micah was making notes. Actually his wife. She just kept her maiden name for obvious reasons. Too many jokes just begging to be told, I said. Micah also had their dates of birth and various other data. Machete Man had a strong Glaswegian accent. His accomplice was the silent type. Average height, average clothes, average everything really. The balaclavas were knitted. Anything else? Their bank account confirms that they took out all the money from it on the day of the robbery, Micah paused. I waited and eventually she continued. I looked back over the last few months. The lion's share of their incomes from the county council, Taylor, and from Barclays, Lech, were transferred to a numbered account. The name of the account holder was a moneylender, Simon Dagerfield. His rates of interest would make Shylark size water. Does that make him a suspect? Yes and number. If they defaulted on a payment then he would have to make an example of them. On the other hand, if they kept up the payments he would be the last person to rob them. Although he is a nasty little man. I accidentally on purpose bumped into Lech at the Crown. It is not a pub I would frequent for choice. The carpets are filthy. I couldn't take Barker because they ban dogs. In any case I think he would need a bath after contact with that carpet. Nevertheless we did discuss dogs. Lech owns a staffy called Jaruzelski. Jaruzelski had a number of little habits which were cute or irritating depending on your perspective. We went on to talk for a while about Brexit and the state of the nation but he was bound to mention his recent experience as an example of the latter. He did. You know about my run-in with the machete man. It's a sign of how this country has gone to the dogs. You ought to feel safe in your own home. He raised his voice and got sounds of approval from other customers who had clearly heard the story too. Yes I saw it in the papers. It's appalling. Have the police got anywhere? What do you think, he asked. 
I kept my thoughts to myself so he continued, it's like that time the police toilets were stolen. They've got nothing to go on. I didn't get a proper look at the criminals. They seemed a couple of average guys in terms of height and weight and what have you. I never saw their faces because they wore those knitted balaclavas. They were dressed in black except their trainers which were both white and both identical. You can see I've had to go through all this for the cops, for all the good it's done. Someone can just break into your own home and threaten you and then get away with it. I offered to buy him a drink and he ordered an improbably large whiskey before taking his leave. He's had a terrible time, one customer confided to me, been too frightened to come out of the house so it's good to see him here. He probably needed that shot to summon up the courage to go home. Our next information about Machete Man as the papers were calling him despite the fact there were two of them, came from an unusual article on the Worthing Herald website. Officers of Adia and Worthing Council got more than they bargained for when a case of fly-tipping was reported in a Darigto car park. The item was a refrigerator but when they opened it they had to call the police immediately. A body had been cut up to fit into the space. The officers have been off sick with stress since the finding yesterday. Inspector Tilotso has appealed for calm. He would like any information about the dumping of the refrigerator which police believe must have been by the murderer or murderers. He confirmed to us that the mutilations could have easily been the work of a machete and repeated his appeal for the public not to panic. There is as yet no information about the identity of the corpse but DNA, fingerprinting and dental records are all being consulted. The police are also interested in any reported or unreported missing persons. Is this the work of the Derek Machetti man? The following day there was an interview with the man who reported the fly tipping. Mr. Barron was unable to provide much information. Well I think it was Saturday but it might have been Tuesday because I always like to take the dog for a walk on those days but it might have been Wednesday. Any day really. I just saw the fridge. I can assure you I know nothing about the well you know inside it or I wouldn't have reported it. I like to keep myself to myself you know. Now so queer as folk, Micah commented on this, add in. I think we might have a little chat with Mr. Barron and see if we can clarify his reminiscences. The little talk wasn't straightforward. We took Barker because he is good at breaking the ice. Unfortunately, Mr. Barron's Shih Tzu Oswald was having none of it and set up a barking which could have wakened the man in the fridge. I've said all I'm going to say. He started to shut the door. Micah said, ah. Mr. Barron I think you might have been traumatized on finding out the contents of the fridge and you might be entitled to compensation. It's a lovely word, might isn't it? All sorts of things might happen so Micah wasn't actually lying, she wasn't exactly telling the truth either but it did the trick. I suppose you'd better come in. It would help us considerably if you could just show us the place where you saw the fridge and then we can come back and fill in some forms. We need a few details. Micah smiled. I'll show you. I'll bring Oswald. He needs a walk and he won't bark at your dog so much if they are both on common ground and not in Oswald's home. We walked the short distance to the car park. It was bordered by a small area of trees and there was a fair amount of rubbish strewn around. You see what I mean. People treat this as a tip. The council are always coming round to clear it, mainly because I ring them up. As you can see it is a labor of Sisyphus. All this rubbish has been left here since the council cleared the area a couple of days ago. The fridge was just here. It was lying on its back. I suppose the door might have come open if it were upright and that would have been ghastly. I reported it to the council. Was this the same day? No it was the day after. 
Do you ever watch the TV? Did you see Line of Duty? Come to think of it, I did watch it. Was that on the same day as you found the fridge? No it was the day before. Micah made a note in her notebook. We talked about Line of Duty on the way back and then Micah produced some official looking claim forms which she filled in for Mr. Barron. We had the date, the time and the fact that he had never seen the fridge there before so we could pinpoint when it arrived at least. Do you have any ideas about who might have dumped it? No, I told the police that I hadn't seen it being dumped. It would have taken quite a sturdy vehicle to carry the weight though. When we got home there was more news on the Worthing Herald website. The body that was found in a refrigerator in Darigto has been positively identified by DNA as that of Mr. Simon Dagerfield, a prominent local businessman. He has no family and therefore he had not been reported missing. His business associate, Mr. Eric Green, was unavailable for comment but it is understood that Mr. Green will be taking over the business. It couldn't have happened to a nicer bloke, Micah said. I suppose I'll have to take him off the list of suspects. He couldn't have chopped himself up into fridge-sized bits. However, apart from the people who owed him money, my main suspect would be this green character. He is taking over a dirty but lucrative business. The people who owed him money. I asked. We will have a devil of a long list and I have a sneaking and quite unprofessional sympathy for anyone who kills a moneylender. Green is a different case of course. We will see if he will talk to us. We could be shopping around for a loan. Those bloodsuckers are not really for people who can afford to shop around, I began. Any better ideas? For Micah my silence implies consent so we got Green's address from a card in the newsagent's window and went round to see him. Mr. Green lived in one of the posh houses in High Salvigto. He looked the part of a businessman but there was something unpleasant about him which gave away what a nasty business he was involved in. Now then, Mr. M. C. Larry, Mrs. M. C. Larry, can I offer you a cup of tea? We accepted the offer and sat down on seats to which the misery of Mr. Green's clients seemed to cling. That may have been my imagination. In fact Micah tells me it definitely was. Now I know full well you were not interested in borrowing money from me. I am sure the Darigto Detective Agency has plenty of resources so that set me thinking about what you were here for, he began. You know of my unfortunate partner's demise. I can assure you that I have a perfectly good alibi for the time of the murder. Still there is nothing so suspicious as a good alibi, eh Craig? His laugh was not pleasant to listen to. How did you two get on? I asked. He was a good boss. I had no complaints on that score. I could wish his records were in better order so I could continue to provide the same service to the community as Mr. Dagerfield but there it is. I am sure there will be new clients to take the place of Mr. Dagerfield's list. The list is missing. As I said, don't make me repeat myself. He kept it on him. Micah asked. He was old-fashioned like that. All records in a little black book. It is sadly missing which will not make this chaji over easy, Mrs. M. C. Larry. Now if you have no other questions, I am a very busy man. A supremely nasty man but can you see him wielding a machete? I asked as we made our exit. He would have got somebody else to do that, Micah said, I can imagine him giving the order though. An hour later. Micah looked up from her laptop and shook her head. He makes no use of social media, he does not use online banking, he does not have an email account. If he has a computer it is not connected to the internet and he only uses his mobile phone for calls she said. A complete dinosaur, I said. Well he should suit you then. 
Barker always likes a ride in the car so I took him up to High Salvicto. I parked at some distance from Mr. Green's house. This was going to be a long job. I was a bit surprised when my phone started vibrating. Hello, MC Larry, Green here. Listen, High Salvicto is quite a nice neighborhood. We don't want you and your smelly Daricto dog around here. Just thought I'd tell you the police are on their way and if there is any more stalking from you I will have an antisocial behavior order slapped on you and have that dog put down. I'm quite friendly with the magistrates around here, you know. Now be a good fellow and buzz off. I didn't know how much of that was bluff but I didn't hang around to find out. See Coda. I see you are looking into the unfortunate demise of Dagerfield. How C. Coda knows these things I don't know. I suspect witchcraft but she has been very useful to us in the past. Do you know anything about Eric Green? I know enough to keep well away from him. He isn't violent. Not now anyway but in his youth he was a vicious tearaway. He was inside for actual bodily harm for two years but usually his victims refused to prosecute because they were frightened of the consequences. It was his girlfriend who was prepared to give evidence. Do we know why? We found out six months later when the girl died. Beatings from Green had accelerated her death by several years, according to Dr. Winter. He was a half-decent doctor in those days remember. The windbag years came later. Green doesn't need to do the heavy side of the job anymore. He has a young Walt Alderman for that. He drinks at the Egremont and he usually drinks alone. I hope that is useful. As ever, see Coda. Shall we say fifty quids worth of useful? You're too generous. No I take that back. Fifty is just right. C. Coda laughed. My mother told me never to talk to strangers, was the disappointing response from Walt Alderman when I caught up with him in the Egremont. I wondered if you fancied a game of cards, I suggested. For money. You can't play cards for money in a pub without a gambling license, I said, taking out the pack of cards. What's the point then? I tried my last resort. Fancy another. It usually works. We settled down with our drinks and I eventually got him playing a game of rummy. He was very bad at it. I let him break the rules by taking back a few cards he had unwisely discarded but he was still bad at it. We talked about Brexit and whether it would ever come to anything and the state of the country. This seemed as good a way as any of introducing the body in the fridge. Did you hear about that guy whose body was found in a fridge? No, was his surprising reply. He read a text message on his phone and suddenly smiled at me like an Alsatian who wanted me for dinner. Oh, he said, I know all about you now. Mr. Craig M. C. Larry. Thanks for the drink but you can run along now and take your cards with you. He threw his hand on the floor. I left it there. I wasn't going to get within kicking distance of him. When I got home, I could tell something was wrong. Micah doesn't look stricken by qualms often. She asked a few perfunctory questions about Alderman and nodded absent-mindedly when I replied. It was over the shepherd's pie that she decided to unburden herself. You know Letch and Taylor claimed to have been robbed in their own home. They took all the money out of their bank account to give to the robber and that meant they couldn't pay Dagerfield. I noticed her use of the word claimed and nodded. Well there's more to it than that. They could stall Dagerfield if they said they had been robbed but not indefinitely. He would demand his pound of flesh soon enough and no sob stories would stop him. Do you think they weren't robbed? I know they weren't. I have been keeping tabs on their bank account. It is surprisingly easy. The bank should be more careful. 
However the point is that all of the stolen money has been returned. The Man with the Machete A work of fiction but one that became real after the event. The most likely explanation is that they chopped up Dagerfield, either separately or jointly. My money is on jointly because of the logistics of chopping up a body and putting it in a fridge. Well, we should hand this information over to Inspector Tilotso ASAP. I said without much hope that Micah would go along with this. They killed a moneylender. And you agreed it was unprofessional to let the nastiness of the victim prevent us pursuing the killer. It wasn't our case, Craig. We didn't have to do anything about it. And the means I used to get the information were illegal. You know what this means. It means we can't hand the information over to the police because they can't use the evidence. They can apply for a court order to investigate the bank accounts, but they have no reason to investigate the Box family. I'm sorry, Craig, we will have to leave the police to work this out for themselves. Within six weeks, Lechbox confessed to his crime, gallantly absolving Taylor of all blame. She had in fact departed from the country. A clever lawyer tried to argue that the balance of his mind was disturbed. The jury concluded, however, that you don't need to be insane to want to chop up a moneylender. In prison, Lech wrote a bestseller about his experiences. The profits were donated to Citizens Advice.